Oh, I've been following the thread over on the Telmark Talk Forum, and there's a user by the name of INJT who's been struggling with his Fisher Excursion 88s. He's been struggling with the skis, and he's wondered if he's made the wrong choice. And uh, he's been having problems getting them to turn. And as I understand it, he comes from a downhill alpine background, and he's tried lots of different te techniques, and he said that none of them seem to work for him. So he's definitely frustrated. Now this is my first time at skiing the Excursion 88s. And these skis are my wife's skis, so they're just a little bit short for me. Now today I'm over in the Caribou National Forest of Eastern Idaho, and I'm traveling on a, an old snowmobile trail. It has a maybe an inch and a half of new overnight snow. It looks like somebody's been out on this on, with snowshoes. Wow, it's just absolutely a beautiful day today. The first thing I want to look at is how well these skis kick and glide. So there's no real surprise there. These skis are excellent for zooming along, breaking your own trail, then coming back out on your own tracks. Now obviously they're too wide for a Nordic area where they groom tracks. These have an 88 millimeter tip, and you really shouldn't ski anything wider than a 70 millimeter in a groomed cross-country area. For the benefit of those who don't have much experience with turning on cross-country skis, I'm going to shoot a little bit segment here, and maybe you'll find this helpful. The problem with trying to demonstrate turns on video is you can talk about all the fundamentals you want, but uh, it's really something you have to experience. And uh, my recommendation to INJT is that, you know, you find yourself a nice little gentle hill like this to start with, one where the snow is fairly consistent, uh, and just start the practice of learning your balance and learning how to turn your skis. So I'm going to set up my camera here, and we're going to just do exactly that. So find yourself a gentle hill. Set yourself up a track if you have to, or if you want to. And then the first thing to do is just go ahead and slide down the hill and practice. Practice this movement here. This is your, your tail mark stance. Get comfortable with it. What you want to do is, you want to feel balanced. You essentially want to be able to try to get as much weight as you equally can on both skis. Because if you, the tendency is to put all your weight on the forward ski. Most people want to thrust their front foot forward and their trailing ski dangles behind them. If you don't have weight on equal weight on your skis, you're just not going to be balanced. So practice that a few times. Practice that balance. And then after you feel comfortable with the balance, we're going to try just a real gentle turn. And we're going to turn across the hill to one side. And so what we're going to do is we're essentially going to Put one ski back and one ski forward. We're going to balance our weight. And then what we're going to do, just like if you were on alpine skis, you're going to turn it with the curvature of the skis and the edge. So what I like to think about is, you know, big toe, little toe. And when I'm making a left-hand turn here, I want to see, I want to act like I have weight on my toe on my right foot. And I want to act like I'm putting weight on my little toe on my left foot. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay, let's go into it. Now go ahead and make the turn. Now obviously we came to a stop, but that's important because when you're first learning to ski, you want to be able to turn to the side of the hill and come to a stop. So now let's do the same thing again, only this time we're going to turn right. So once again, let's go down here, let's get a little bit of speed, let's go into the stance. 
and then go ahead and make the turn. Now there's lots of videos on the web. I mean, you can look at all kinds of videos all day long. And, you know, the only way to really get the feel for it is to go out and practice it. And the only way to practice it is to start on gentle slopes and progress your way up to more st steeper slopes. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna head into the back country. We're gonna get away from the Forest Service Road. We're gonna find us some hills. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about turning. You know, most people, after they've skied on cross-country skis for a while, skiing a Forest Service Road where you have to make gradual turns or minor turns are not an issue. That really comes pretty naturally. There's all kinds of easy turns you can make. You can make step turns. You can do kind of a semi-parallel turn. You can make a snowplow turn if there's conditions are right. Where people start having problems is when they truly step off into the backcountry and they start seeing steeper terrain. Terrain with obstacles, terrain where the snow conditions are changing all the time. The only advice I can give to INJT who's struggling with this issue is that don't give up. You know, you have to walk before you can run. You have to essentially learn the fundamentals and get comfortable with your skis on the easy stuff and then slowly venture into the difficult stuff. And as anybody who's skied for a long time knows, you know, there's conditions that are easy when the snow is just beautiful and it's like silk and turns and it doesn't take much effort. Things seem beautiful. And then there are other snow conditions where it's real crusty, breakable crust or maybe really heavy, wet, dense snow or maybe it's wind blowing slow and you got a combination of hard packed drifts followed by deep soft snow and you're going from lightning fast to all of a sudden stop. Those kind of conditions will do nothing but frustrate a beginning skier. And especially if you have an alpine skiing background and you're used to skiing groomed slopes and you head out on a pair of cross country skis, for the first time, they're gonna feel like there's no control and that these things don't even belong in the backcountry. So here's the little sample here we're gonna try with these Excursion 88s. And uh, although it's not real steep, you can see it's really bumped up, bumped up with sun bumps as we call them here. There's a little bit of fresh snow on top, so it'll be a nice challenge. Let's just take a look and let's see how these Excursion 88s ski this. Okay, you can see what the conditions are like. These are all these sun bumps I was talking about. So underneath this fresh snow, there's some bumps. Now we're looking down the hill. I'll point this down a little bit more so you can see the skis. Okay. We'll do a couple parallel turns right at the bottom here. So we can take a look at these tracks here. And at the very bottom down there, I did sort of a parallel turn. And uh, it was a little awkward for me. It's certainly with these high cambered skis, it's much harder to do a parallel turn than it is to do a tailmark turn. You know, the flatter the ski is, and the more closely it's shaped to a traditional alpine downhill ski, the more you're going to be able to use those techniques when you're cross-country skiing. With a highly cambered ski like this, which is an off-trail cross-country ski, it's going to take a whole different technique than what you're used to. Here we're climbing uphill. These skis climb really, really well. One thing for sure is, is that everybody does the tailmark turn just a little bit differently. 
And a person who's at the resort who's got plastic boots and downhill oriented skis versus a person who may be on skinny cross country skis. The stance is definitely going to be different and everybody has their own style. I think people make the mistake too often times they get their forward ski out there and they're trying to steer with this forward ski and they forget about this rear ski. They just it gets noodling back along here and pretty soon it gets lost. It, it just it just doesn't control. And you really need both skis to make the turn. Instead of trying to go really, really, really deep when you're first learning, you know, try to do a, a turn where your stance is more upright until you get the balance. And uh, it just will be, I think it'll be a lot easier. Anyway, practice that stance and practice your balance. Here is actually a really nice slope. You can see it's nice and uniform, not a lot of tracks. It's not super steep and we should have fairly consistent snow. And there you have it, Fisher Excursion 88s, gentle slope, good snow conditions. Okay, that first run was the Telmark run. Now I'm going to try and see if I can parallel turn these. Now, like I said earlier, parallel turning on cross-country skis is just a little bit harder, unless the snow conditions are right, so this is obviously not going to be pretty. Let's give it a try. Well, I just want to go into the Telmark turn in the worst of ways. Well, that definitely worked. So you can parallel turn on these. You just, you can't force your way through these turns with cross country skis. You don't have that plastic boot and that heel that's locked down that you can just literally, you know, command those skis to turn and they turn no matter what the conditions are. You really have to feel, you have to feel the edges, you have to feel the snow, and uh, the softer the boot and the more camber the resin on the skis, the harder that is to do. And uh, like I said earlier, there are just some snow conditions that I think it's extremely difficult to cross-country ski turn on. And in those kind of conditions, this is exactly what you want to do. So I'm gonna demonstrate what you do if you're not comfortable skiing straight down the line. What you do is you, you diagonal across the hill. You just ski across the hill. You turn up into the hill. You do a kick turn. You ski across the hill again. Turn uphill. Do another kick turn. Ski across the hill again. Well, every cross-country skier I know has to resort to this technique once in a while when the conditions are bad. Let's do another kick turn. And before you know it, you're down at the bottom of the hill. So what do you do when you're faced with a bunch of obstacles like this? How can you deal with the situation? Well, if you can't comfortably ski through the trees, you're gonna to have to find your way away down the hill. You know, if you have skis that have mini skins or will take skins and you're not comfortable skiing through the trees, well then, you know, put your skins on and uh, just they really control your slide going downhill. And uh, it'll, it'll just give you that little bit of confidence you have. And eventually you won't need to use the skins anymore. You'll just be able to ski it. So this, this is how, if I was a beginner skier and I was faced with these trees, you know, I got to make it down to the bottom of the hill. Well, what would I do? I, you know, I try to pick a path that I can ski through and stop. Let's go ahead and let's just give this a try here. So I'm skiing across the hill, not straight down the hill. So the my angle is, is fairly low. And I'll look for a place where I can essentially stop the ski. Then I would do exactly the same thing. I'd turn around and I'd kick back the other way. You know, if you have to, you know, sidestep to get yourself into a little better position. You know, do a kick turn. 
point back down the hill. Ski while you're under control. You don't have to ski very fast. Turn uphill if you have to, to stop. Do another kick turn, reposition yourself. Eventually you'll get down to the bottom of the hill. Most places, the woods aren't so thick that you can find a way down. And, and if you're not a good skier, then you're just gonna wanna avoid ski conditions like this. You know, eventually you'll get to the point where you can point down the hill and you can essentially go through the trees and you'll be able to, to ski it. And, uh, you know, even, even thick trees like this won't bother you. You'll be able to work your way around. Well, I think I'd like to wrap up this video. And for those of you who are struggling and get frustrated with the XCD skis and you just didn't think that they offer you much control, I want you to be patient and give it time before you run out and grab those plastic boots and those big fat wide downhill skis. I mean, I have them and I ski them all the time and I ski them where it's appropriate and those are steeper slopes. But for most cross country skiing, and I really do enjoy cross country skiing and rolling terrain, you'll eventually get there. You'll eventually be able to control these skis. You know, you're not gonna ski the prettiest lines in the world with cross country skis. It's not gonna be a thing of beauty. But who's out there to watch? Who's out there to judge? The thing is, is ski the way you need to ski. Eventually it'll click. And eventually that telemark turn will just be natural. And you'll be skiing down and you'll be going and you'll be able to ski whatever you want to ski. See some trees you want to go through? You'll just point through the trees and you'll just go through them. And if you want to make a turn, you'll make a turn. It's all good.